Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. A whole lot of TIG welding going on today and I'm using a Lincoln Power MIG 210 MP. Power MIG, but I'm TIG welding. Let's get into it. Alright, this is the main project today. It's a base for a bend test fixture for bending straps, bend test specimens, plate and pipe based on AWS D1.1 dimensions and specifications. So I'm going to need quite a few amps. And I set this thing up about 175 amps. But first, before we get into that, let's talk about the machine and what comes with it for just a minute. It's best to think of it as a MIG machine that also stick welds and does a lift arc TIG. It's primarily a MIG, but it does a pretty good job of stick and lift arc TIG. Multi voltage, so you can plug it into 115 or 230 volt, which is pretty handy. I pretty much am going to use this with 230 volt. You get a lot more out of it that way, but if you need to, if you need to throw it in your trunk or in the back of your truck and carry it to your brother-in-law's place to fix a fence or something, you can definitely do that. Now this is something I'm having a little bit of a hard time wrapping my brain around. It does, does not come with the cannon plug for the foot pedal. You have to buy it and install it yourself, and it's kind of an ordeal. You got to take the machine apart and fish it in there, and it's not that easy. I spent I spent about an hour doing it, and uh, you know with some long long duck bill pliers and uh, hose clamps pliers and things like that, and fishing it in there. I got it in there, got it back together, and you know once it's done, it's done. And I do want to be able to use a foot pedal with this thing. I will also show how to set it up just using the scratch start TIG, and that's a whole lot easier. But I'll do that in a later video. So it's kind of very intuitive though. I mean, I believe a beginner, I didn't read the instructions, I believe pretty much anybody can can just peck around on this thing and walk your way through it and get set up and start welding. That's what I did. I didn't even crack the, the plastic on the instructions, just started turning the knobs and selecting and went right, right in where I needed to go. Like I say, I'm up pretty high amperage here. I'm going to be welding some pretty thick stuff, inch and three quarter thick round stainless bar. And uh, that's the base of a bend fixture again. But before I fire up on this, since I haven't even lit up on this machine yet, let's run a lap joint, uh, 11 gauge lap joint, eighth inch thick roughly. And I'll set it at 120 amps and we'll just make sure that everything is, is going to come out okay there. All right, so now this is lift arc TIG, not scratch start, not high freak start. So basically the way it goes is you rock it in, touch, press the foot pedal, and then rock it back and get your arc. Now again, this is lift arc, not that much different than scratch start. And the main benefit is being able to maintain gas coverage when you stop or when you terminate the arc. Starting the arc is not even a problem with scratch start. In fact, I will show how to set this machine up using scratch start TIG. Very inexpensive and very easy. Uh, in another video, but again, this is, we're doing lift arc TIG here, and I don't like the regular style cup that comes with these big 17 torches. Once you get used to a, a small torch and having spent a lot of years in aviation aircraft industry, uh, it's really tough to get used to the big setup again. So the stubby gas lens will take an air-cooled 17 and it will shrink it down and provide good gas coverage using the gas lens and make it almost as good as a nine style uh, cup and you don't have to have a water cooler and you got a nice maneuverable torch with a very low profile and really good gas coverage so I bring that up not just because I sell these uh, on the Weldmonger store but I, I just really love them I just like them a lot better than the, than the standard setup they work a lot better they feel better and they get in tighter places all right, so let's run this lap joint here. Cold rolled steel, cleaned up, wiped wipe down, cleaned off with a sanding disc, and we're keeping a tight arc. And you know, I'm working around the camera, so I am doing a little bit of shaking here, but you, you get the drift. So terminating the arc, I see this torch has a valve switch on it. There's no solenoid uh, timer post flow on the machine, although I don't really understand why there isn't because there you know is obviously a solenoid valve in the machine for MIG welding but in this uh, this setup you use the the valve on the torch well let's swap up things here a little bit now and we're gonna test the uh, 
ability of this machine to light up on pretty thin stuff. I'm going to leave the 332nd electrode in there, but I'm going to set it up for a 116th electrode so that I got a really low start. And we'll see what happens there. It's trying to stick a little bit and you know doesn't have a real crisp start, but I just want to see if it can start up on thin metal without blowing a hole in something. So I got a 25 thousandths thick box cutter blade here and just wanted to see if I could start up on it and run a, run a bead without blowing a hole and not bad. I did have it sharpened up like a needle and it was pretty careful but you got quite a bit of control with the foot pedal. I've seen other videos where they didn't use a foot pedal and they said it kind of had a little bit of a blast of amperage at low amperage but with the foot pedal you can light up on some fairly thin stuff. This is not thin stuff here. I'm, I'm cranking it up now. I'm, I'm, I'm lighting it up on inch and three quarter inch thick metal, 175 amps, and I'm going to be pouring the coal to this little thing, just because it's it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of stress. I'm going to put it on the bottom of a Harbor Freight 20 ton press, and I'm going to bend weld test specimens with it. So it's gonna it's gonna take a beating. You can see I'm just washing the corner of of that stainless into the weld as well as filler metal. That's the first pass. Then I'll come across with a second pass. And that will look something like this. I've got a little bit of a bad torch angle there, and that's why it's kind of chewing off and undercutting there at the top of the weld. But on the last pass, I'll kind of fix that and, and make sure that I'm pushing enough rod in there to eliminate any undercut or anything like that. And so a total of three passes. Sometimes, actually, it could have even been four. But it's a lot of weld metal, a lot of penetration, but it's going to take a lot of stress when I'm pounding on bin test specimens. Okay, almost done. Another reason for the stubby gas lens with the short button cap is getting into situations like this. Sometimes you need as short a torch as possible. Sometimes you wish you had an even shorter one, and, and there are other torches that will get in tight spots like this, like a number 24 style torch, but a stubby gas lens will let you get in a lot tighter places than you can with what comes with most torches. Again, we'll do a little shot here of the uh, cover pass on, on one of these things. Just pushing in enough rod. I'm using 1 8 inch 309 filler here. And I'm pushing a little bit of extra rod in most of the time. And you may notice the product placement of the TIG finger. And that is mainly because this thing is really toasty be really hard to prop like I'm doing right here without something to keep my finger from getting burnt. Alright, well let's adjust the machine now for some 18 gauge stainless steel. That's something that would be pretty common. A portable machine like this with a dual voltage on it, you might want to take it for some kitchen repair, food service type work, and we'll, we'll adjust it down to 18 gauge and that takes me to I think around 60 amps. There we go. And again, I'm still using a 332nd electrode. I, I could easily and probably should be using a 116th, but I'm just leaving the 332nd in there because that's probably what most people do. 332nd is the most versatile, most useful size electrode, I, I think, of all. You can do really thin sheet metal stuff, and you can get up, you know, over 200 amps with it, too. But I'm using a copper spoon here uh, to hold down this lap joint. You, you don't want any gaps in a lap joint, so you got to have something to clamp it down with. And I usually just take something like this with one hand and tack with the other. You get a tack every couple of inches. You know, you don't want to you don't want to spread your tacks out too far because if something like this warps and opens up and you got a gap, it just kills the joint. So that's that's a lot of tacks, but it's not too many tacks at all. So I'm just going to do a little quick fusion lap joint here and to see how this machine handles it, see if it's got a good enough low end and good enough control with the foot pedal to do 18 gauge stainless and actually it's no problem at all. In fact, I accidentally left it on 90 amps and just uh, worked it with the foot pedal for this joint and didn't have any problem controlling it there at all. And, this, and the gas lens provided some really good coverage there. Well, time's up for today. This machine's impressive so far on TIG. I'll put it through MIG and stick later on. You can subscribe to Welding Tips and Tricks videos by just clicking the subscribe button that's under this YouTube video if you're on YouTube. 
And hey, visit the store at weldmonger.com and see some of the products that were used in this video, mainly the Stubby Gas Lens Kit and also, of course, the TIG Finger. And we also now have the TIG Finger XL that's bigger and thicker. And of course, if you got big, big hands, big fingers, you might want to give that a shot. Hey, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.